Second most natural thing to do after that is just take those chords and arpeggiate them. It's a natural variation on just a strum. Breaking up a chord. So now, let's take a look at these arpeggios. Basically we have two kinds. We have ascending and we have descending. Simple enough to remember. Likewise, we have two kinds of planting, what I call planting, and we're beginning into this in a minute. We have a full plant and we have a sequential plant. These are the two best ways to practice and to perform, to execute these arpeggios that we're talking about. Now, this is a plant. Now, take a look at my I finger. It's on the G string here. Now, I'm going to plant, I'm going to do kind of exaggerate here and show you what I mean. Remember before we talked about place, pressure, release? Well, that place basically means I was planting. Place, place. I'm planting. I'm placing the finger exactly where I want it on the fingertip before I play the note. It's a way of controlling the stroke, controlling the tone, articulation. Everything about the stroke is controlled just by practicing this plant I'm talking about. Let me play this a few times for you. Now you're saying, well, Scott, okay, you're cutting off the tone between notes. I'm hearing the tone stop. Well, you're right. I'm exaggerating the plant, showing you how I prepare. This is also a plant. the gap between notes at all. Now, what planting does is it keeps the stroke small, or not, I should say, keeps the motion to the string small. When we, pla when we practice planting, basically it disciplines our finger not to come way out too far and hit the string. When you hit a string, you can't control the sound. You cannot control the stroke when you hit a string. When you control a note, you must plant the finger. And basically that just means just momentarily touching the string accurately before you play it, before you play the note. Now, for a full plant, a full plant is as it implies. We're putting the fingers involved down before we play them and we're putting them all down at the same time. So let's say we have an ascending arpeggio, which, by the way, we use, uh, is where we use a full plant. Okay? Now. I'm doing open strings for now, so my left hand doesn't get in your way. Notice that my fingers, IMA, go down at the same time. My thumb is separate. My thumb goes down after my fingers play. Fingers, thumb. Fingers, thumb, etc., etc. Now notice this. As I get faster, see what happened? I stayed close to the string. I stay close to the string naturally because I've practiced planting. You can also do an ascending arpeggio sequentially planting, which means putting down each finger simultaneously, or individually, I should say. So as soon as I'm done with one finger, the next one goes down. Let me show you this one while I do a descending arpeggio. Okay, A goes down, M goes down, I, and the thumb. You plant immediately after you pluck a note. Not during, just after. If you have your guitar in your hand, try to follow me. Just to get the idea, just follow me for a second. Got that? Are your fingers going down securely? Are they going down exactly as you want them? Now notice this. Now you can follow me or not. It doesn't matter. I'm going to speed up. The stroke didn't change. I didn't come 
not any further from the string. So you can see the benefits of practicing planting. You're going to control your tone and your movement by this practice. Now how do we practice these? As far as I'm concerned, the most well thought out, well laid out set of exercises for arpeggios is still to this day Mauro Giuliani's 120 right hand studies. I like them because they're almost mathematically figured out. Whether he figured them out mathematically or not is beside the point. Just about every possible arpeggio combination is in there. Granted, he uses just C major and G7 chords, and a lot of people think, well, how boring. Well, that's not the point. The point is that it's the patterns that count. And in practicing these patterns, make sure that you plant correctly and practice it enough at your own pace where you feel comfortable with the planting. You can always, again, I keep saying this, but you can go back and review the tape, and look exactly, get that close up and look and follow me. And there are plenty of suggestions in the book on how to divide up the arpeggio studies themselves and practice those. Good luck. Scales. Everybody wants to play fast scales. You know, it's fun, it's flashy, and it seems to be a goal, the primary goal, I guess, unfortunately, of a lot of people. I don't know if I should say unfortunately, because it's something I'd, I've always wanted to do, too. But over the years, i found that control and accuracy are much, much more important, that we should always strive for control and accuracy, always above speed. Speed will come. And I should also say that we all do, yes, have limits. We all do have limits. We're not all going to be able to play as fast as Pocket de Lucia. But that's all right, because he's Pocket de Lucia, and we're us, and you're you. So over the course of practicing all this and, and working with your technique, you'll find what your basic limits are. Hopefully, we'll burst through a few limits doing these exercises. But the point is that eventually, you're going to have to realize that within your limits, control and accuracy are much more important and in fact they will give you the maximum speed that you need. Now let's talk about speed. Before we can play any scales fast we have to be able to play a succession of notes fast with the right hand. You can only play a scale as fast as your right hand will take you. If your right hand only goes that fast, well that's as fast as the scale is going to go. So you see what I mean. We have to work with the right hand first. So let's do that. The best way to do this is with speed bursts. Now in the book, I have some laid out, and you'll see them on your screen. Now you notice in looking at the music here that we're just going to play on the G string. Each note has a staccato mark underneath it, which means I want you to play each note very short. And by in playing short, you're going to get the next finger to the string as quickly as possible, and you're going to plant like crazy. See what I'm doing? Now I'm trying to make each note sound very equal, and again, I'm getting good tone, always getting good tone, listening to the quality of my sound. Now what I want to do here is, as you watch me and follow along, if you will, I'm going to go through this whole page. Each line is repeated. And I'm going to repeat each line once, and you just follow me. Let's try it. I'll count us off. Here we go. Three and four and. 